Are you ready, Justin? Ready. Don't sound so excited. I'm, I'm not. All right, get a good aim here. Five, four, three, two. Today we're gonna to take a look at some eye anatomy. Now often we think of the eyes as very delicate structures, However, the outer portion of the eye is made up of some extremely tough tissue. Jonathan, so, you should just go ahead and tell them why they're here today. So I may have had a professor teach the outer portion of the eye, talk about how tough it was to the point that eyes would actually bounce. He has talked about this for years now. So this is a pretty big day for Jonathan. But don't let him fool you. He's totally curious and excited to see if the eyeballs actually okay, bounce. Okay, I admit, you know, you've talked about it enough that my curiosity is peaked. So we're gonna do that. And we did pick up some cow eyes because they were going to be thrown away. So we decided we'd save them in the name of science and education. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is just take a look at some anatomy and I guess bounce some eyeballs. Yep, so let's do this. Let's do this. So let's go over some basic anatomy of the eye before we get to our little experiment. The eye can be broken down into three layers or in other words, three tunics. The outer layer is known as the fibrous tunic then the middle layer we refer to it as the vascular tunic, and then the inner layer is known as the retina, or you could think of it as the inner tunic. We're gonna focus on that outer fibrous tunic because that's gonna give the eye all of its strength, especially for our experiment coming up. So let's take a look at the cow eye here, and there are gonna be obviously some similarities between human and cow eyes here. And let's take a look at the fibrous tunic because that's all we can see with this particular dissection or cow eye. The white part, which we're all familiar with the white, part of our eyes, this is called the sclera. The sclera of the eye ends here at the junction where you start seeing the cornea here. Now both the sclera and the cornea are both made of a dense connective tissue, a dense connective tissue that creates all this strength for the outer portion of the eye. Now granted, this has to be transparent, the cornea compared to the actual sclera, so light can be refracted through this, but both of these structures are actually relatively strong as far as its ability to resist tension and also the pressure inside the eye. Now I'm squeezing on this eye pretty hard here and inside there's going to be a fluid or a gel-like fluid called the vitreous body. And part of the job of this outer portion of the eye is to maintain the shape of the eye and deal with those intraocular pressures. Now we're gonna do something a little different and put outside or we could call it extraocular pressure on these eyeballs to see how much they can withstand. But one other thing before we do our experiment that I wanna show you that's really cool here. If I reflect some of this tissue away here, one of the other functions of the actual sclera or the white part of the eye is to allow for the extraocular muscles to connect here. So this is one of the eye muscles or a muscle outside of the eye that actually will move the eye. And that kind of makes sense. So your white part of your eye has all these little skeletal muscles attaching to it. So you can slide your eye to look outward, to look inward, to look up, to look down and even some rotary eye muscles that are pretty awesome. But we again wanna know how strong this thing really is. How much can it withstand? So with that being said, let's go to the experiment. We are now to the testing portion of our video. It is time to suit up. <sighs> the irony. Oh, really? What? Protect the eyes from the eyes. It makes sense. <laughs> All right, let's do test number one. Let's do this. About five feet here. Okay. Let's go here. All right. I'm a little nervous. This is like 15 years in the making for me here. Well, you better make this good then. Does it splat or does it bounce? Here we go. Huh. I mean, it bounced. Yeah, didn't splat. We need to go higher. We definitely need to go higher. I'm going on the table here. All right, that works. <sighs> Are you focused? Dude, don't even think about it. Okay. Science, <sighs> what is it all for? <laughs> I mean, it got a little higher. Yeah. And it doesn't break or splat like people might think. I think strong. We can still go bigger. <sighs> we need to go bigger. Stairwell? Stairwell. Let's do it. This is going to be the most epic eye drop of all time. Oh yeah, four stories up. You really think you're going to be able to fit it through there? Yeah, 
Of course I can. I'll believe it when I see it. I've got this. All right. I think we should even do it from the, the fifth floor. We should probably start with the second <laughs> floor first. Okay, we'll start smaller, work our way up to the fifth floor. So, let's do it. So we are on the second floor of our building, prepared to do our first test in the stairwell. And I have five eyeballs here because Justin doesn't trust me to do it on the first try. I have a little faith in you, but uh, very, very little. I'm gonna do it on the first try, first try. You in position, Justin? Yep, I'm ready to go. All right, in five, four, three. Woo! A little early there. <laughs> I got like, I got like two and a half, maybe three feet. Is the so. eyeball intact? Yeah. Dude, that thing's tough. We're on the fifth floor here. It's quite a narrow pass to make it down through five stories, but I can do this. We recovered the fifth eyeball, so I've got five shots to do this. Are you ready, Justin? Ready. Don't sound so excited. I'm, I'm not. Okay, here we go. All right, get a good aim. In five, four, three, two. Dang it! It was almost there! Do it. Here we go. Eyeball number two. Ready the landing pad. And five, four, three. I'll just drop the stupid thing. Ah! It's almost there. Here we go. It's still intact? Yep. Hands down, the number one question we get asked is, what's the best way to study anatomy and learn about the human body? And our answer still hasn't changed. It's the cadaver lab. But we also know that not everyone has 24 seven access to a lab. And that's why we created our digital anatomy resources to bring the clarity and depth of the cadaver lab right to your screen. Whether you're looking at our illustrated atlases, visual flow charts for physiology, or clinical anatomy breakdowns, these tools are designed to help you learn faster and retain more. And if you really want to take your study game to the next level, check out our study bundles. These bundles combine everything from anatomy flowcharts to quizzes, physiology guides, flashcards, and more. All in one downloadable package. So if you are asking, what's the best way to study anatomy? The Cadaver Lab is still king, but these digital study bundles could be your new study sidekick. So click the link below, grab a study bundle, and start learning anatomy the way it was meant to be studied, clearly, visually, and confidently.